Hi, thanks for coming back. We're at uh, Hampton Court again, Mitre Hotel, looking at Hampton Court Palace uh, today to talk to uh, somebody who is is just funny, funny, funny. You know, it's difficult sometimes when you introduce people, what are you going to say about them? But I would say this man only has one kind of purpose, and that is to be funny. He's not saying, hey, look at this, and what about... No, no, just, just funny. Who is it? It's Milton Jones. Hiya. How are you doing? You're right. Yeah, is that that's a fair that's a fair thing, isn't it? You meet a lot of people who say, yeah, but what I really want to do is this, or I'm also doing this. But it seems to me you just want to make people laugh. I think so. I don't have an agenda, that's for sure. In yeah. terms of politics or uh, and it took me ages to work out that half the battle was A, you had to have something funny to say, but also create an atmosphere where people are going to laugh. I think sometimes you come on thinking the script is everything, mm. but actually you've got to create a world. And that comes from the look and the attitude more than anything else. You just look at someone like Tommy Cooper. You know, it's like you come on and, and people are laughing before he's sort of done anything. Well, you want to be in their company, don't you? I think, I yeah. think that's very important. I always think of a, a show like Friends, which, you know, laugh for laugh. My God, there's a lot in there. But equally, you just want to be in that apartment. You yes. want to be in yeah, that yeah, environment. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And yet, that's also, when I look at you and, and your act, I, I was thinking, geez, you, you don't get much time to just coast because mm. it's gag, gag, yeah, yeah. gag. There's a real pressure on you. Sure. And which works well for me on short spots on TV or radio. That's great because I get to the joke, bang, mm. straight away. But when I do a longer show, I have to vary the angle of attack. You yeah. know, in terms of, I don't think anyone wants to hear more than 15 one-liners in a row. No, 15 minutes of one-liners in a row mm. before blood starts coming out their ears and it's too much information. So you have to have a bit of music or props or, I mean, just gags as well, but just from a different angle. Yeah. Now, as a younger person, it would never have occurred to me that thing. Would it to you? that at a very basic level, you just have to show the audience something different within their field of vision. You have to, uh, there's a great line uh, Barry Humphrey says as Edna Everidge recently, you'll find an old, very old person in the audience and she'll say, look, <coughs> she'll, look at this old fella, he doesn't know what I'm doing, he just likes the colour and movement. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's really mm. kind of resonating uh, with me now more than it did as, as a younger comedian. Yes, because it can be very simple, and the simpler the better. Mm -hmm. um, but it's quite takes quite a long time. It's like if you see a brilliant violinist or something, you think that's so good, it looks really easy. Yeah, yeah. But actually, it's the culmination of a, a lifetime of work. To, but has to it always simple. been one-liners for you? Uh, pretty much, in that when I first started, I was terrified. So I needed to get to the joke as quickly as possible. And if you do that a lot, then you get one-liners and then you become known for it. And also I think I have quite a short attention span anyway. Let's go back to the, to, to the beginning. So you, yeah. you grow up, Milton, in, in uh, lovely uh, West London. You're a brilliant academic or an idiot? No, I was very middle of the road at everything. I didn't really come to the fore until I started doing drama mm. at secondary school and literally a teacher or two thought a new boy had joined the school when I started doing drama because they literally hadn't noticed me before. Wow. So uh, that was my sort of saving thing. I was quite good at sport as well, but drama sort of... Um, I started doing impressions of teachers and stuff. Yes. And yes. Uh, they took notice. And, uh, and then I thought, ah, oh, I can do this. I found it was easier if you're playing chess or something to, get, to go bam to the board or something like that to get a laugh or a joke yeah. um, than lose. It was, uh, I could time things and, and make a mess of stuff or fall over when you're doing sports day or whatever it is and get a laugh. Yeah. Did you do higher education? I went to Middlesex and fortunately it was drama and uh, I could write my own stuff again. Yeah, which, important. Um, and uh, I played Shylock even. Did you? I'm not sure I'd be allowed to do that. I was days. about to say yeah. you probably wouldn't be allowed. No. I did an Ibsen play. I played Burnick in Pillars of Society and mm. all sorts of things. So I thought I was going to be an actor. Yeah. Always trying to be. 
but despite not going to a proper drama school, um, stand-up comedy didn't really exist in the same way. Because where are we now date-wise? Uh, Mid-80s. The mid-80s. When were you first aware of the idea? Because I heard someone saying on a... Oh, I forget who it was. It was somebody else's podcast. When they first became aware of the concept of stand-up comedy. Mm. Because you forget, it wasn't always something you were aware of. You no. had to encounter it. What, do you remember the first time you went, oh, there is a thing where you just stand on stage with a mic? Well, well I actually saw Dave Allen and people do it on TV. Yes. But in terms of just a microphone, it probably wasn't until Saturday Night Live, the first oh, yeah. iteration, yeah. Uh, that I suddenly thought, well, these guys are making their own stuff up. So Ben Elton... And Elton, um, probably was Eddie Izzard on at that point. I can't remember. Angelo Brothers, was it? There were lots of little acts, mm, weren't there? Mm. But it was clear that it, it was a large element of they wrote it and it wasn't in a, they weren't doing Irish or mother-in-law jokes. So it was different in yeah. that sense. It was felt like it was a new wave. Who was the first stand-up you paid money to go and see? Well, I used to... Um, live at that point in St Margaret's and the Bearcat Comedy Club. Was... I played there on Saturday night. Really? Yes. Wow, wow, wow. How long before you performed there? Uh, I tried to do an open spot there after <gasps> a year or two and it went so badly. Me too. That was oh, really? my first ever open spot was there. I had a I had a tape because I was doing voiceovers and it was a funny demo tape. People said, this yeah. is a funny demo tape. This is, hey, this is funny. Yeah. Everybody said it was funny. Everybody to a man or woman. I thought, well, I'll just do that. No, 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 yes. no. Not good enough. Yeah, not simple. And I was met with silence. Wow. Well, I had some jokes to go and I got there and I thought, I'm going to change it to a German accent. Don't ask me why, and I'm going to call myself Gut Morgan. You, oh, I, I like that. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You, you, um, and you decided that on, on the way to the venue? Yes. Oh, Lord. And I bought some pizzas on the way to the venue. This, and, oh, and, I can't relax. Man. No, no, I can't either. Uh, and I threw them out into the crowd. Oh, right? I love your confidence, yeah. Yeah, well, it wasn't rewarded. In any, they started making sheep noises in the end. I don't know why sheep why? particularly. Why? I don't know. I had I had that when I played up the creek. Yeah. I, I'm starting doing these very weak, whimsical Welsh things. Yeah. And one person goes, bah, and I ignore it. And yeah. another one, bah, and ah. I swear to you, the whole, the mm. whole room. And I just, which is the worst thing to do, I didn't address it. I just carried on as if it wasn't happening. Yeah. Terrible. Which is kind of the worst thing. It's the worst do, thing you can it? do. The worst yeah. thing you can do. Yes. I know that now. <laughs> Do you remember we did a remember we did a kind of corporate lunch event once at the Grosvenor House? You may not remember it, but we Vaguely, were on, yeah. I was hosting it. Yeah, you you were one of the acts, yeah. and you did a one of your many great guys. Uh, and you've done so many that you must forget them. But mm. you did the one you said I just been on a plane coming back from say New Zealand, and mm. there was a there was a terrible Eastern European animated film on it. Mm -hmm. You remember this? Uh, yeah, no, I can, I can do it. Um, I didn't think much of the film on the plane coming back from Australia. It turned out to be a 24-hour animation of a plane travelling from Sydney to London. Whatever you do, don't go and see Time to Destination. Oh, how funny. That's a great... So that comes from you're on the plane, you see that, and it yeah. just occurs to, to you. To be honest, I have to say that my wife said it to me. Or, Did she? Obviously, it wasn't in the right form. No. And I had to do a lot of work polishing it up. But no, Carol, my wife said, imagine if someone thought this was a film or something like that. And your eyes lit up. Yes. Do you reverse engineer your jokes? How, how do they come about? Um, my whole act is reverse engineered. Is it? Yes, my is life it? is reverse engineered. To so, explain that for people that, okay, that don't Okay, so some phrase or thing, uh, phrase or a, a reversal will hit me in real life. For instance... If I see kids playing hide and seek and someone will say, oh, you're getting warmer, you're getting warmer, you know, when they get nearer to someone they find, a phrase like that will think in my head, I'll stick in my head and I think there's something in that, there's something in that. Uh, how can I put that in the worst situation possible? You're getting warmer. So lots of meditating upon it. And in the end, I'd come up with something like, like one of my earliest memories is my mother, seeing my mother through the oven window <laughs> as we played hide and seek and she said, you're getting warmer. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So yes, yes, yes. you start off with uh, something that is the worst possible. Yeah. 
like, or like um, you hear someone in a conversation say, well, you know, I didn't like to ask. Okay, that's just a little phrase. But then if you reverse engineer it and put it into the most, the, the situation with the most jeopardy, if you like. Yes. Uh, it could become, I'm not sure why I lost my job with MI5 as an interrogator. <laughs> and I didn't like to ask. Do you see what I mean? So uh, always looking for those little phrases all the time. And at the end of any given tour, they're all gone. Yeah. I can dress up old tat because so much of what I do is more of like an attitude or, oh, please do your Ronnie Corbett impression again. Sure, yeah, but, but that's handy. I yeah, mean, it I, is handy. My equivalent of that is um, people will say, do your granddad jokes. Okay. And I've got a whole string of okay. my grandfather. He's staying with us at the moment. He's got a black eye. I knew his room was too small for a cuckoo clock. <laughs> my other grandfather... When he died, we didn't even get the chance to say goodbye, which was all the more poignant because he drowned in a bowl of Cheerios. <laughs> <laughs> so I can do that. I can do that for five to ten minutes. Granddad jokes, bang, 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 and, bang, bang. And they'll have heard some of them before. It doesn't matter because we love these jokes. Exactly. Great. And then you want to get it down to the minimum number of That's words. That's a lovely joke. Well, I've tried to make them more theatrical. Right. In that oh, I've, this is what we were saying. Yeah. yeah. Given the audience some, something else. Yeah. Yeah. I was using an overhead projector, you know, the old school. Yes. Old school overhead projector with acetates and things. I've gone now to um, a projector, pictures and stuff as mm. well. Um, and I was doing flags in the show I'm doing at the moment. Flags. Flags, yes. What do you do with flags? Well, Remember I... Remember the old variety act? They'd say, so-and-so, so he fills the stage with flags. There, <laughs> there was an act where they said he fills the stage with flags. Well, um, I... Different countries talking to each other. Right. In fact, uh, there was a sketch, which is America talking to Russia. Oh. And you should feel the room go when I pull out the Russian flag oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the American has to say, the sketch was so much funnier three months ago, uh -huh, uh -huh, <laughs> which gets a big laugh. Yeah. So the tour. Yeah. What's the tour called? Uh, the tour is called Milton Impossible. Right. I came up with the title first, unfortunately, and then I had to write a whole thing about spying, uh, which is where the MI5... Uh, I yes. didn't want to ask thing uh, fitted in in the end. So that is a, that is a joke in the current tour. Yes. So if you want to enjoy that joke yeah. again, <laughs> and depending on your cognitive skills, it could be the first time you're experiencing it, or you yeah. hang on a minute, yeah. then this is the tour. And hey, I often ask people who are touring, if someone out there wants to come to this tour, is there a website or something they could go to? Well, unsurprisingly, miltonjones.com has all the dates I wondered if you'd have that one. Yeah, yeah, I, can, I find that easy to remember. Who were the ones then when you were growing up that you aspired to? Uh, well, I, I never wanted to be a comedian. I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be someone like Ronnie Barker. Right. Or Leonard Roster. Yeah. You know, who were comedy actors, really. Yes. Um, that's who, what I was trying to be. Um, but I ended up doing stand-up because I wasn't working as an actor. So it just came from that. Yeah. So these open spots where you went to the Bearcat and different places, that was, look, I've got to, I, I want to express myself somehow. And in those days, equity cards were a thing. Of course, yes, of course. So there was that. And also you could maybe get someone, director or producer, to come and see you if That's you were actually right. doing something. That's right. Please so, come and see me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know when you used to want to do that? I remember this now. I look back and I think, oh, if someone just saw me. It's still a you. You need some bloody good fortune for them to come. Mm. They can come and see you, right? And they can think you're not very good. That's one thing. They can come and see you and think, well, he's okay, maybe mm. with time. And that's. They can come and see you and think you're good, but nothing's man, around. Yeah, nothing's around. They can come and see you and think you're very good, but they've still got mm. nothing for you. Mm. You've got to have so many things yeah, that come absolutely. into play. Yeah. So as you start to do the stand up. It's, you're throwing pizza at the audience, you're changing yeah. your name at the last minute. How soon does it settle down to what we think of as Milton Jones uh, now? Well, there were the two-year gap. Of course, the trauma. Yeah. Uh, and then I started doing the open spots, that, like the one with Lee Evans, that, mm. um, and that was fine. Yeah. Because I was doing things at college and stuff like that as well, which th there you find out the massive jump in level between doing things for friends. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Who are on your side. Yeah. 
and then going to a bunch of strangers. I, I came to see you that time in Hampton. Was it some kind of warm-up Hampton Hill? Do you remember that? Oh, yes. yes you, you'd forgotten about that. Yes, and then we went to yeah. the pub afterwards. Yeah. Oh, he'd, he'd forgotten. It meant nothing yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah. I've thought of little else <laughs> since that day. So the tour, uh, Milton Impossible, uh, yes. uh, uh, continues. Continues. Dates in the autumn. Milton and it's, Jones, a, it's a tricky website, miltonjones.com. Com. You've remembered it, thank you. Is, yes. is, is that Milton Dot Jones? No, no <laughs> dots apart from before the com. Well, hey, thanks. No, pleasure. Nice talking to you. Good to talk to you. It's, I'm finding it hard to finish, Milton. I keep okay. wanting to carry on thanking you, so, so thanks. No, thank you. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks for, thanks for taking the trouble. My pleasure. Then my, I'm going to have the last word. <laughs> this thanks. could go on for a while. No, Milton Jones, thank you very much. <laughs>